Here is probably the fastest and the best way that I think you can climb and improve in Horse and Battlegrounds. It's been a while since I did a video like this, last time you really enjoyed it, so I tried to give it another go. Basically, I'm gonna jump in a game and I'm gonna talk out loud about all my decisions and all the questions I'm asking every single turn. That is, I think, the biggest way to improve or the best way to see your flaws and try and get better. That is asking the right questions at the right time and trying to find all the answers. So if you don't know what to ask or how you should be playing this game and where you should be going, what your game plan is, hopefully by me just playing this out loud i'm able to you know clarify some things so i'm just gonna queue a game i don't care if it's first or not usually I, i'd share cool games whatever is educational but i'm just gonna play one game whatever the outcome i'm gonna post it because i think the thought process will be the most interesting thing to learn from this even if i get an eighth place let's hope it's on the eighth place though that'd be kind of embarrassing so the takeaway is just listen to the questions that i ask at what stage of the game and try and ask them yourself if you're in a game if you queue a game after this video for example uh maybe even record it yourself and talk out loud ask this, the same questions every turn or different questions depending on your situation depending on your hero but try and find the answers that's how you will see yourself climb the ranks in battlegrounds and yeah, become a better player all right we found a game let's see if we get some good uh heroes okay so uh we have instantly i see vol'jin who is kind of busted right now there's no dragons however no beasts and no pirates it's always important to see what tribes are missing so what I noticed is most divine shields are in. There's no bronze water, but all the older stuff is in. Actually, no dragons is really bad. There's no chromoing. I kind of need chromoing on Vol'jin to get high attack. So maybe that makes me want to pick another hero here. You know what? I think Adora makes for a way more interesting game. So let's go. I think Adora has way more cool decisions to try and stay alive on higher tiers. I think it will be more to learn here than me playing Vol'jin. There's no chromoing as well, which I think is really important, because how else am I going to get reliably high attack to put onto other cards? And yeah, Curator, also without dragons, there's no Whelp Smuggler. So tribes are super important when it comes to picking heroes. Look at the tribes first and then consider each hero. Uh, so we don't have a token, we can't consider Suicide Curve. A pretty strong opener. I think it's Pubbot, because Pubbot is a, like way better at getting my body meter, I think. It's a mech, so if I do lean into Menagerie or I dig a buff or whatever, uh, it has a tribe, so we can work with this. It's also really good if you find a mummy to get the attack up from the Pubbot. Um, so I think I just like this card more than the Acolyte here. Acolyte is slightly better if we do happen to find Avenge, but that's about it. I'm also not freezing, I'm probably doing a rough bomb curve. Now, um, I notice Simi in the lobby, who I know is a great player. I don't recognize any other names, so I don't know how strong this lobby is gonna be. Now we found a pair, amazing. So that is the power I think of our farm curving with Adora. Uh, our money works out very cleanly and you could find a second triple and then you triple into two five drops early on. And if you don't know our farm curve, I'm just gonna stay on one until six gold and then level, level, level. Then I finish my dig on tier four. I get a random golden card and a five drop. I think five drops are okay. Uh, actually, there's no hogger. There is no mama bear and crocolisk. Tier five isn't amazing, but there's menagerie in every single lobby. So let's hope we hit one of those or just a spike so we can level straight to tier 5 right after uh, we'll see we have our buddy anyway which is going to provide us with a good tempo so i do want to get my buddy the same term that i get my dig done so i do want to play strong boards so i'm going to go full tempo and not just take tokens for example you don't really need tokens on the door right like you don't need the economy it doesn't help you a whole lot since your curve is fixed anyway and that way i yeah i'm more reliably getting this buddy on time so we're able to tie with a gallywix gallywix is kind of a scary hero still they can high roll pretty hard also there's a lich so we got a lich player who we know is just gonna stay on tier one and farm ref fevers kind of boring but um this is interesting so what are we gonna do? Are we gonna roll to try and hit this triple or a mummy or something? Or do I buy Weaver, freeze and buy another demon next turn? Mm. Do I just wanna buy Weaver and demon? I think so, because if we dig and we hit Light Fang, we have another second good tribe. So I'm already looking into the future if knowing what we're gonna dig up, what five drops, I wanna give myself as many possibilities as possible. So I think actually going with the Weaver here and freezing this demon is worth it. Now you could consider the other demon for Avenge, so both of them have upsides, Avenge and a better card to buff. I'm gonna go with this because I don't think it's very likely that we dig into a golden Avenge card or you know uh, if we find Avenge is the turn later and then it might be too late already to start getting value. So I'm mainly picking this just because it will be strong. I'm definitely losing this fight. Holy shit that is that is insane. Um, well let's just lich for you I guess. Uh, I hope I still get my buddy done. I have two more turns or three more digs actually. So I should get it. Now just level by dig. This is completely the same. Next turn as well is gonna be probably exactly the same. Another level 
um dig level dig so there's not too much to think here usually what i like doing is if you have free time or during combat already thinking of what you want to do next turn that's one thing i notice is my turn starts and then you start thinking of oh shit what do i have to do and you waste like 20 seconds and then the rope starts and you're panicking so all the downtime that you have you is better spend just thinking of the next couple turns like i know next turn is already figured out there's nothing to freeze i would only fr freeze this triple maybe yeah, probably not these pairs. It's not really worth it, I think. This triple is also actually good because it can start getting buffed by uh, the buddy that we have. Now, uh, Death Speaker tripled into a tree drop. Kind of weird. Let's see what other people are doing. Um, everyone else is just kind of, you know, still being down on tier 1 or 2. Uh, they tripled their Weaver or their Demon, I guess. I hope they didn't triple into a tree drop. That would be very unfortunate because they're a tempo hero and we are playing literally Adora. So it would be kind of weird to triple into a tree drop here. They did, however. I mean, it's a Weaver. I guess Weaver is the only exception to the rule, but I still think it's kind of weird to make this play against a uh, Adora. You might have also noticed that I'm not asking that many questions at the moment. And that's because the early game is usually very streamlined. The main questions are, how am I going to do this curve? What cards am I gonna buy? I'm gonna go for, for strength or for pairs or what is my general game plan? And my game plan is just to get this dig done during your farm curve. So the decisions are pretty easy and mostly made for me. I'm gonna lose more health. I'm on 29, which is kind of yikes. And we're facing a Barov. And we know that Barov can have an insane board at this point because they have more gold than others. So let's hope that's not the case. Also this positioning, I'll explain it real quick. This is mainly for Acolyte. I try to play around Acolyte as much as possible. So I put something here. If I have a 1-1, one, one, I put it here. I'll just put a 3-5 here. I could also do this, but in case they don't have Acolytes, having a 3-5 early is better. No, oh, they just double leveled straight to tier 4. Okay, so they're skipping to tier 3, meaning they might not be too strong, but I think still stronger than us, I'm pretty sure. Adwin still staying on 1. Everyone else double leveled, except for, well, Lich also stays on 1. And they're also demons. I think a lot of people are just playing with Wrath Reavers here, which is uh, gonna be... Well, interesting, I guess. It is a poison lobby. There is Murlocs. Uh, there's just no beast and they reborn my Exynos. Also really important to note. So demons are actually okay. And uh, next turn is the big turn. Oh, that was a bad head. But yeah, playing around the Acolyte. Putting a 2-2 two -two first and then... So as I expected, they're really strong. They have double mummy, so everything has super high attack. And I actually don't get my buddy on time now. Facing the Lich into the barrel of has just been uh, or into this guy who triples into a tree drop into the barrel of has just been my death sentence we do get the second triple though so we did get rewarded for this play for not freezing at all uh and we are gonna get two five drops well one five drop here uh golem profit not the best we found this level though not with a triple this can be an agam agam would be really good in this spot uh <laughs> that is Underwhelming. I guess Mackerel has potential. So all of these, Begurgel just sucks. Tavern Tempest is economy, which is like valuable because I can fill out my board here. But I think we have to try and make the Mackerel work. So I'll do this, I'll freeze. And I might even sell out of this next turn, so that way my buddy buffs actually land onto Pubbot guaranteed. Uh, hopefully I get to find a Quill board to play with this, but if not, so be it. Positioning is a little bit hard. I think I'm gonna do it like this. Make sure that I get a shield onto this first, then try and trigger the health buff. This is also better in case of Acolyte, uh, so otherwise I waste a 6-4 attack into a 2-1 Reborn Acolyte. Uh, then just another 6-6, six, six. I'll put this further back and then... I guess you could swap these, I'm not entirely sure. But I just want to make sure that this often gets a second shield. So maybe it's actually safer to do this. Sure. Uh, he did triple into a 5 in the end. Uh, yikes. Oh no, he's holding a triple. Okay, so he tripled, but he's holding for a six. Um, I did get my buddy again a turn late, which you hate to see, but I think I've played uh, some tempo-ish boards. It's just people have been doing crazy tempo against me uh, this game. But we actually don't lose a round, which is massive, because we're on 22 HP. As long as I can stay above damage cap, I feel pretty comfortable, and we could even consider leveling sometime soon. Well, that is way too greedy, though. Holding for a six here against a spiking Adora, I wouldn't do that personally. Oh, and there's a module. Okay, so let's see what this triple is. If that's a second mackerel, we might be in business. I would still take an Ogum. Uh, it is actually a second mackerel. Okay. So, we might be in business. The thing is, we have no scaling for these mackerels yet. But those are issues for the future. I'm also not gonna value digging anymore. And we're up against a demon hunter who's playing Murlocs. I guess Illidama, I should say. I, people get triggered if I say demon hunter. 
So what is my goal right now? How do I advance this board? I should ask myself. Uh, the thing is, I, I only have my buddy for scaling now. I do have double mackerel. The way I scale up mackerels is with maybe brand leapers. Or I could use some sort of gems generation. I think I'm always selling out of uh, one of these two. I guess this is less. I'm selling out of this. I'm slapping a module onto this mackerel. Gem splitter would be amazing, I guess. Yeah, that would be a really good card to find. Um, I'm gonna put this in the back. I guess I'll just buy a Sun Bacon because none of these are much better. I could also Argus both of these, but I really want the gems here um, to put onto the mackerel. I play a full board. I'm not gonna. I guess I could sell Sun Bacon for a dig. It's actually better to sell this and be down a unit because then I guarantee that the shields come back on this. So being down a unit is this is one of the rare cases where it's actually good. Uh, let's hope we win this flip here. Um, if not, then well, I, I did plan on selling this, so it would be kind of bad. But I can't risk. Yeah, I can't risk uh, selling this here. But yeah, this is this is why being down a unit is fine. I get a shield back twice, guaranteed, unless they open with wind free, which. Oh, I don't think it's gonna happen when they play Murlocs. Okay, so now we gotta think about leveling. Since we are relatively strong, as you can see here, like we absolutely destroyed this uh, Illodon. Uh, and we have no skilling yet, and I, I, I don't even think Agam is good anymore at this point, since I'm full max. There's also no Tony, so we can't really golden our buddy too easily. Uh, there is a Greasebolt, which is a card, <laughs> but I think Splitter, we could be a Shaker Comp, I guess. Shaker Comp is also really good. I'm just figuring out how we advance this board. I think I will take this, since it is at least better than this card, and I want to sell this as well. Uh, so I need to find replacements. I'm not gonna level, I think, against the Barrow who's leading. There's still a lot of upgrades for me to make. Uh, I wish I had an Elemental, but I don't. This thing doesn't matter that much. Arm is also tempting, but since we already got this, I think I'd way rather roll first for a good quill board, then I can get out of this. Splitter is also still... Ooh, that is... That is good. If I buy this though, I can roll, but I can't buy a Quillbore anymore, so I might just not get the two gem value. Or I might have to keep this for one more round and then risk another flip. But I guess we could sell out a pub bot. But then it's getting awkward. Mm, I think I'm just gonna roll, sell, double play button, uh, and just take the flip again. I don't see a different way to make this work uh, any better. I'm gonna play around Wildfire, I suppose, and hope that. We got lucky? Okay, this time we got lucky. Nice. Okay, later on. I mean, it doesn't really matter since I have a shield anyway, I guess. The wildfire play. And unless they delay it, but okay. We actually have double grease bolts killing. I haven't played with grease, bolt, grease bolts in a while. I think this is the first time I have a double grease bolt board uh, here. I think in like literally a month. So, you're witnessing the very first grease bolt scaling macro comp <laughs> that I've played. And we're actually decently strong. So, uh, if you level, what are we looking for, right? Like, is it worth leveling? Maybe it's not, because Jam Spitter would still be nuts, we can still be a Shaker Comp. I can triple this, which is really good. Uh, another module is great. I think most cards are 1 or tier 4. Light Fang isn't even good. Brand is like okay, but that would be the only 5 that I would desperately want here. Honestly, the only reason to level would be to triple into a 6, maybe for a Mega Buster. But I don't see a reason to level. I just don't. I think I want to stay down and find the good cards. Um... The only flex spot I have right now is this. So I think I'm just gonna roll. I'd love to play a quill board if it's still, but I just can't. There is the module, that is amazing. And now I could, I guess, consider ending on an arm. Mm. And there is splitter, okay. So this is out and I think we're just moduling this and ending on splitter and that is our comp. Main issue is, yeah, we lose a bit of value, but it is what it is. I can't keep it around. I'm not going to get baited here. We have now double mackerel, ping pong, and uh, splitter. We should, I mean, wildfire doesn't matter again, uh, but we should maybe, maybe just do this. I don't think there's too much cleave anyway. I could lead with this um, just to kind of take a risk, but yeah, I don't want to do that. If they go first, now I guarantee at least get one shield back. Uh, otherwise, I could lose on, out on the ping pong, which would have happened here, because these are very small. I need way more stats onto my, my mackerels here. Um, these gems are just pure stats right now. If I level... Okay, we're actually going to take it hard. What the hell? Let's do this strong. 
I can't die because of damage cap. But yeah, this is just Gallywix, right? Like, this this is the issue, I think, with the game right now. No matter what I try and do, Gallywix found a Nomi and double dashing Light Spawn. And uh, he has his buddies to stabilize, so we're never able to beat him. Unless... There is an unless, always. Demons here. Kill the Arana. Arana was really weak, to be fair. But losing to seven demons, uh, they held for a six, so they might have stabilized by tripling into a Felbat or an Imp Mama. Again, there's no reason to level. Maybe I'll level next turn with my Dig. That is a different story. But I want to find Shaker. Maybe with Shaker Comp we can beat him. Well, we found the Shaker. So I'm going to take it. And I guess he might have to go out of these. Arm is better than uh, the, the Grease Bot. It is still a pair though. I think I just try and roll for this triple. Because if I triple it, it could stay on the board. Yeah, no, these are not really what I'm looking for. So I guess in the end, I have to sell one of these Grease Bots to stay alive. Play a Shaker. Do a Dig and just Shake a bit. Um, so the main upgrades on the board right now would be um, probably a triple on this, but I mean, obviously that's pretty hard to get. A second splitter or a triple splitter. Replacement for this. Uh, and I think we just got to try and stay alive now. Knowing what the lobby is doing, I'm actually pretty strong. I only lost one fight after my dig to the Gallywigs. I think other people we might be able to beat as long as he's not... Okay, yeah, he's just big stats, which I think we can maybe deal with. Uh, that was a bad flip. I, I wish they attacked first or that we went left side because now this is a really massive flip. He needs to hit left or I might be dead. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing you can really do about that. Uh, maybe there's a way that I still live. But the Felbat needs to die. Okay. Wait. Fuck, it was a flip to live. Um, yeah, I mean, I got 7th place, but I still think this game was really worth, uh, you know, posting. Just because I think we actually were a strong comp. We had a lot of potential and just lost a bunch of flips in that fight, sadly. Um, yeah, so sometimes you're gonna get 7th place here. I guess it happens. That's just Adora for you compared to good heroes. But I like my board. I think I was actually stronger than Rafa, and I feel like I got scammed there. But I play without percentages because percentages just tilt me anyway. But what are the takeaways from this game? Basically, just try and figure out your win con. Is it worth the level? Like, at first I was really considering going to 5 and I was setting up for Menagerie. Then hit it though. I hit one mackerel, hit a second triple into a second mackerel. So that was my game plan. Try and figure out what to do with those. I'm gonna stay on four, and the best way to get value is well, I found grease bots, which I'll just take for a little bit, gave it some base stats. Then I have Jam Splitter, I can go and transition into a Shaker Comp, which is a great tempo comp that can actually beat big stats consistently. It was able to probably beat those demons most of the time if I just want either a flip onto the ping pong or just, you know, flip there in the end to value trade. None of that happened, sadly. We know Gallywix is gonna win the lobby, nothing you can do about that, because, uh, I mean, there was poison a little bit but overall those are the big decisions that and the big questions you got to ask yourself what am i looking for what is my win con uh, where should i go and uh, especially compared to your opponents what are your opponents doing if they're big stats shaker comp is actually in a really good spot yeah very unfortunate as it's seven players it is all of this i still hope you enjoyed it and learned something from this game don't forget to subscribe if you're new uh, and i'll catch you in the next video